Hello everyone, Ron Johnson here from LTL Tutoring Central. And if you're looking for tips and strategies to help with your learning, you are in the right place. Imposter syndrome. What is imposter syndrome? Well, you might not have heard the name, but you might have felt a little bit uh, like you have suffered from imposter syndrome or maybe a lot, depending on your situation. Basically, it's a feeling of inadequacy or a feeling that you're a fraud. So you might be in a job where in which you feel, how did I get here? How did I get this promotion? Uh, or you might have you might be doing very well in a course at school or a particular grade and think, I, I don't really deserve this. I don't think I've done enough to get here. And you feel a little bit like a fraud and uh, that you don't deserve the, the good things that are coming your way. Now, uh, that is often not the case. Many people who suffer from imposter syndrome have achieved amazing things. And, and others, uh, you, might, you might have heard of some famous people who have felt this way and you think, well, how is that possible? They've created such great music or they play such great sports or they've written some wonderful book. How can anyone with that much achievement uh, feel that way? And yet it doesn't really matter uh, what stage of life you're in. Uh, or what career you're in, you can have this feeling uh, of a, a loss of control. So it, it is related to an internal locus of control, an external locus of control. So it's a sense that uh, if something bad happens, if you have a failure or you've made a mistake, it's your doing, uh, it's your fault. But if something good happens to you and you achieve something wonderful, it had nothing to do with you. It was all just luck or it was other people. And so you have this sort of skewed uh, locus of control where you're not able to see your own value and then recognize that you do deserve to be uh, where you are. So one way to resolve this or at least mitigate it is to look at the evidence, look at the facts. So you have to uh, take a step back and objectively look at what have you done to get where you are. And you have to drill down sometimes to look at all the small things. So you're showing up to class all the time, you take good notes, you study frequently, you go to study groups, uh, or in a work situation, you're attending the meetings, you're helping your coworkers, you're, you're good with the clients. You know, you have to look down to see all the various uh, positive qualities that you do have and that you have offered and that's why you're getting the promotion and that's why you're doing as well as you are. Uh, you can also ask others to help you. So sometimes, you know, ask a trusted person, uh, not someone you don't trust, but, uh, you know, why do you think that I'm the one getting this promotion? Or why do you think that I'm doing so well? And they might be able to see things that you can't because sometimes it's difficult to assess ourselves. Sometimes it's difficult to see ourselves. And you could even talk to the professor if it's in a school situation. And then once you've looked at the evidence and you've got a clearer picture and you sort of understand, you know what, maybe I really do deserve this. <clears throat> you have to do something more because that won't last. It will disappear like that. The reason is because we probably, if we're suffering from this imposter syndrome at this point, especially if it's fairly severe, we've sort of trained our brains unwittingly maybe to follow certain pathways. And just like a, a car or a wagon that goes down the same path over and over or a footpath that people take all the time, it gets a rut in it. And the easiest way to go is always just to cut across that path. And that's what's happening up there. You're going to you're going to return to those familiar pathways where I'm not worth very much. I just got lucky and one day someone's gonna find me out. And that's the imposter syndrome, that feeling that you're a fraud. So you have to rethink and re-message and change those internal messages. Start deliberately reminding yourself over and over again of what you've done to get where you are and that you do deserve um, what you've achieved. Uh, so you're basically rewiring the brain, getting some new pathways that will be uh, consistently in a more positive direction and challenge those ruts. So being proactive is very important for almost everything that we're going to learn and learning how to cope and overcome the imposter syndrome is no different. That's exactly what you need to do to try to help in that case. And you can you can get others to help you. Sometimes uh, 
you don't really want to because you don't want to be found out to be a fraud. <laughs> so, so if you have that feeling, I know it's difficult to ask others, but ask somebody who knows you well, a good friend or a or very trusted coworker or colleague and, or classmate. And they can sometimes say, yeah, you're, you're actually a great writer. Look at my writing. And, you know, you can support one another even. And, and that can be very helpful too, to get over that isolated feeling uh, that you're that you don't deserve what you have achieved and if you have you know looked at the facts and yeah it's your fault that there's this major mistake or this major failure use that as a learning experience to move forward it doesn't have to be negative and it can even be uh, it can even be used to teach others on how to avoid making the same type of mistake or this or have the same type of failure so again taking a proactive and positive approach is uh, going to help you uh, much more than just continuing on with those negative thoughts, which is very easy to get stuck in those. So I totally understand, but uh, wanted to give you a few tips uh, if you do feel this way, how to help uh, get yourself out of that imposter syndrome feeling. Check out the blog. Uh, it's a little bit different on imposter syndrome. Uh, there may be some points there I didn't mention here and vice versa. So it's always good to check them out. Like the video if you do, I hope you do. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've reached 400. We're hoping to keep that growing. It's been growing fairly well in the last couple of months. Um, and if you have a comment or question, if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave it below. Alternatively, you can check out the website and send me a message uh, through my email there. I will put links for all of these fun things below. It's Ron Johnson from LTL Tutoring. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Keep having fun and keep learning.